one of the most misrepresented and misunderstood teachings in the Buddha Dharma is that of non-duality, also known as emptiness. Now, I'm going to explain the correct way to understand non-duality with the help of the Samdhi Nirmalkana Sutra here in a moment. But before I get into that, I want to explain how the teaching is normally given why that's incorrect and why that incorrect understanding can lead to suffering for ourselves and others. Now, normally when we talk about non-duality in the West, the way it's explained is that we have the conventional, also known as the relative, over here, the compounded, if you will. And then on this side, we have the absolute, also known as ultimate reality or ultimate truth. And our purpose as Buddhist practitioners is to practice, practice, practice with meditation, chanting, sutra study, prostrations, etc. So that we can escape relative truth and get over here to ultimate truth. Relative truth, also known as daily life, is the source of our suffering. But if we can escape that through our practice, drop body and mind and move over to the ultimate truth, everything will be revealed. Now, the problem with this teaching should have been made clear as I explained it to you, which is that we can't understand non-duality by cutting our lives in half and creating a duality. The moment we separate the relative from the absolute, we ensure that we will never understand, we will never experience emptiness. And this creates suffering because oftentimes we think, well, because the relative truth isn't the real truth, then it's not important. And if it's not important, it doesn't matter. And if it doesn't matter, then why should I walk the dog? Why should I take out the trash? Why should I care about the poor and the downtrodden? That's, that's the relative truth. It's kind of important, but... I'm a spiritual practitioner. I'm trying to get over to the ultimate. That duality we create creates all kinds of suffering for ourselves and for others. Now, to understand the teaching as the Buddha gave it, we're going to read a passage from the Samdhi Nirmokana Sutra. And it goes like this. Suvi Sudamati, for instance, it is not easy to designate the whiteness of a conch as being a character that is different from the conch, or as being a character that is not different from it. As it is with the whiteness of a conch, so it is with the yellowness of gold. It is also not easy to designate the melodiousness of the sound of the vena as being either a character that is not different from the sound of the vena or as being a character that is different from it. It is not also easy to designate the fragrant smell of the black agaru tree as being a character that is not different from the black agaru tree, or as being a character that is different from it. Now, the Buddha, in his great compassion, gives many more examples after that, really trying to drive home the point that, no, relative truth and absolute truth are not the same. Conventional reality is not the same as ultimate reality. However, they are also not entirely different. They are inextricably tied together, and we cannot tear them apart. We can't separate the dancer from the dance. We can't separate the music from the instrument that plays it. Again, they are not the same, but they are not entirely different. If we want to experience the instrument, we must experience the music. If we want to experience the absolute, we must experience and understand the conventional. In other words, we don't need to try and find non-duality. We're already living it. In the same way that we experience the conch when we look at the whiteness of the shell, every time we experience our daily life, 
by washing the dishes, by cleaning the floor, by feeding our pets, we are also experiencing the absolute. It is through skillful means, the skillful use of the conventional, that we are better able to understand the absolute, better able to realize the ultimate. This is why the Heart Sutra famously says that form is emptiness and emptiness is form because we cannot move into emptiness without first moving through and experiencing form. There is no separation between the ultimate and the relative. Again, not the same, but not separate either. Similarly, there is no separation between the spiritual practices we do in the temple, the chanting, the meditating, the sutra study, and the relative ordinary practices we do in our daily life. When we sleep the floor in the temple, that is a gateway to enlightenment. When we sweep the floor in our living room, it's the same. When we give a food offering to the Buddha on our altar, we gain tremendous merit. When we make dinner for our families, also merit. When we understand non-duality in this way, understanding that the relative and the ultimate are tied together, that we use the relative to understand the ultimate, and it is through the skillful use of the relative that we experience non-duality. Now there's no problem. Now we have the purpose and the reason and the motivation we need to wash the dishes, to cut the grass, to care about the poor and the downtrodden. Because when we care for others, we care for ourselves. And when we care for ourselves, we care for the Buddha. Everyday life, non-duality, same thing. Amitabha.